worst part is we do not know what God is. Honestly, I put question to many people, tell me what you mean by God, what we don't know. Then you have to justify why do you have a church or a temple? Yeah. If somebody said, you know, and the view, much of the religion is a kind of habit pattern. We are born in Christianity, Judaism, Hinduism, or Islam. Our fathers, mothers did it, others did it. We follow them. How many people really put a question, what is all about? We are so lazy. Honestly, I'm using the word lazy. Lazy. We don't want to. Well, they, they, they know what they were telling. Let us follow them. The, the big question is in, in, in all these churches, the word God, we all use it. We have to, we have to devote ourselves to God. What is God? Do they understand? I put this question to them. Jewish people, you believe in Jehovah. What is Jehovah? We don't know. We don't know what God is. But we know God men, God women. The proof of God is those people have realized, those have experienced. But men and women, saints, from them we learn something about God. Otherwise, God as such, we don't know. It's, a, it's a, Sri Ramakrishna boldly said, nobody knows what God is. There is an absolute statement. We know only the concept of God. According to our own belief and faith and conviction, concept of God we God we do not know. Jesus Christ also said the same thing, none knows the Father except through the Son. Revelation, God, man. Muhammad also declared, God is all pervasive. You don't know. To surrender and bow down to that soul. You don't see. God is a very important term before you understand devotion. To whom I have to pay my homage, I have devoted, love. Whom to love? We don't know. Even Jesus, even Moses said, love God with all the heart and soul and might. Whom to love? God is beyond. We don't love God that is beyond. I always tell them, I wish you all worship Moses. You will be better off. Muslims will worship Muhammad, you will be better off. You don't know what Allah, what Jehovah is. We don't find any temple in India, Brahma. We have got a temple for Krishna, for Buddha, for Ramakrishna, we have got temples. Why? Through them alone we can understand what God is. And then our devotion is to them, not to God as absolute. We don't know what God is. Even though Narada says clearly, Parma Prema Swarupa is the very embodiment of supreme love. And that love only you understand from the point of the great incarnations like Krishna, Ramakrishna. At least in this age we know Ramakrishna. If I always tell everybody, all people of all religions, if you want to know God, what God is, read Ramakrishna. Sri Ramakrishna very beautifully explained throughout his gospel that one word God, he explained so nicely. We can have a glimpse, intellectual glimpse through those teachings. Once he said, you know, you get up in the morning, Look at the sky, you don't find any stars. Do you mean that there are no stars during the daytime? So also, when you are ignorant, you don't see God. God is there. You don't see it. 
therefore he has explained by that you know god is you don't see it out of ignorance other time he said a lamp cannot burn without oil so man cannot live without god what does it mean what is that that is helping me to live the life force in me is god i am the life christ said and sri krishna also jeevanam sarvabhutesh i am the living life principle in all living creatures that is god the life in us is god god's gift a gift or loan or what's called whatever you may name i call it lease not gift neither gift nor loan it is a lease life is a lease after living what or maybe the length of period you have to account what you have done with it you have given it as life has been given to you now you are god is not there to judge the other some religions they say god is a judge and he will put you in the hell or heaven by judgment no god doesn't judge at all you have to judge yourself what i have done with my life it has been given to me how i used it you have to recollect and you have to judge yourself therefore life is a lease to us we have to properly use it not abuse it in that sense you know, god is our life very life force and parma prema swarupa says that life what is life again god is the life of the whole universe that life is the being that is all pervasive and the nature of the being is loving consciousness god is that loving consciousness so chidananda roopa they call it sachidananda means sat means being chit means consciousness ananda is not bliss bliss is the effect of love nowhere no religion tells you god is bliss god is love god is love that is the correct translation god is the being loving consciousness that loving consciousness is one unit not two love and consciousness separate it's a loving consciousness it is given to all of us every individual has that loving consciousness unit and that is god in us in its pure form there are not two sub things loving consciousness just like sun sun's rays fall on us what do they bring us every ray brings to us heat and light they are not separate the same ray brings heat and light there is one sun just like one god is sparked within me as a loving consciousness that love is from god the love that we generally use it whether properly or improperly it is a gift from god to all of us that love we have to direct it towards him that love is this dana so that love we have to direct to to him and that to understand our true nature we have to love what is called the god beings god men god women i don't love brahman i love ramakrishna ramakrishna to me the very embodiment of godhead he became one with it he plainly said i was one with it the salt doll merged in the ocean i was not there but when he came back he came with full light the divine therefore to us god is ram krishna a krishna a jesus they are before us as gods them we have to love to them we have to pour our heart and soul therefore love love we love god is not something absolute no really relative and these divine incarnations 
are the very manifestations of God. If you have seen the Son, he said, you have seen the Father. If you have seen Ramakrishna, you have seen God. That is why our love is towards Him, the manifestation, the God-men and God-women. So ours Holy Mother. Somebody asked Holy Mother, how do you know so-and-so realized God? Mother said, he doesn't grow two horns. If you find somebody who is unselfish, all-loving and deeply concerned with the well-being of others, these great souls, like the Holy Mother, Sri Ramakrishna, Krishna, Jesus, they stand before us as gods on earth. Therefore, our love is towards them. Pure love, no selfishness, no seeking, I don't want anything. You have given me that love, that very love, I use it in adoring you. Parma Sarupa means that the you, supreme. Want you want to go on talking about The supreme love God is. Ours is a spark. But spark is not separate. The one beauty is our love, our consciousness is part of the whole. It's not separate. It's such a, for this is the chapel here, the shrine. What we have done, the enclosed the four walls, we call the shrine. But space inside, the space outside, they are the same. This enclosure, we make it. Different is chapel, there is library, there is book section, something like that. These divisions are only apparent and the space within us is the same. So are in us the same spark of God, the same loving consciousness in all of us. Only this body mind complex, the enclosed is that. I am this, you are that, you are that. But in all, the same space. Suppose I put incense here because they shine and you got the nice smell of the fragrance. In some place, suppose, not good smell. It's not the fault of the space. The things that are placed there. So also, in us all, the same love, same God is there. According to your mind and body. This enclosure, if you do something wrong, I'll call you bad names. If something good, good names. That is only connected with this body and mind. But soul is absolutely pure. The space is absolutely clean. Okay. Maharaj, you, uh, you give your special ideas, do not restrain yourself to bhakti. Bhakti, Vedanta, Advaita, whatever you like. <laughs> Your special ideas after 40, 50 years. Oh, that. <laughs> well, you ask me a question, then I will answer. That's better, you know. Ideas are millions of ideas. Yes. The ideas are so many connected with life. I know, I know. You can ask any question. That's better. See, my, my, I want to tell you, Ranadha Bhakti Sutra, when you read, you know, mentors who don't know. Go ahead, go ahead. Tell where, where you put that love? First of all, mind is clear what is meant by God. Then you can pour out a heart to that person, to that in individual. And through them we gain illumination. There are also any questions? Therefore, think. that is the most important thing in, in the Narada Sutras. Clarity of concept of God. Yes? You mentioned Sunday that we should never use the word I. Yeah. We use it, but no the limitation. Oh, okay. But there are some people nowadays write, I is small. You say, why? You know why? Some people write, I, I tell small. you, I have done it. Can you prove that you alone can do it anything? Your very existence from the very beginning depends upon so many people. When you say, I have done it, I can prove to you any work you have done. Without the help of others, you can't do it. There are so many people behind that, that act. You 
which you don't recognize it, but they are there. Many times we purchase things, paying money. Oh, I paid it. By paying money, you got it. The getting that money from where? That object also. How many people worked for it? You see, you see, very because we don't put question, we don't examine our thoughts and our actions. When you examine, I discover to your joy. I cannot do anything without the help of others. I depend upon so many people. Another thing is, I it is mine. You can't say that. Did you bring it when you were born? Will you take it when you die? Then how does it belong to you? A simple question. And Isha Upanishad is clearly mentioned. Isha Vasha Bidam Sarvam Yatkincha Jagatyam Jagat Tena Tektena Vunjida Magdhak Kasashadhanam. The whole universe is pervaded by cosmic ruling power. The Lord, whatever we call it. The creative force. It pervades the whole universe. Therefore, you support yourself by detachment. Not by attaching this mind, by position, no. Tena tektena, by detachment. Enjoy it. Magratha Krishnam, don't cover the wealth of anybody. Nothing belongs to you. Nothing belongs to us. We are here just for the time being to hold, to enjoy it and share with others. This Muhammad put more, more beautiful, I tell you. He said the whole universe is pervaded by Allah, possessed by Allah. We are here only custody, we take custody, we are caretakers and trustees. We don't own anything. The house that you build, he said, is not yours. You built it for the material of this nature. Anybody comes for shelter, you have to give them. The food that you cook is not yours. Anybody that is present there, you have to share with them. Once I was going from Karachi to Calcutta, I happened to be in Lahore, noon time. The Peshawar Express came, and we all sat seated there in the car. It was very crowded. One Muslim came in the same Peshawar Express. This is Muslim majority area. Muslim, and he opened his cloth, and there is thick bread. He was looking at all of us and tearing into pieces. And got up. He gave every one of us one one piece, one piece. I read Quran, therefore I knew he was strictly following a Quran's injection. injection. They said, give to Allah, then he took whatever he left. That's it. Muhammad plainly said, the food is cooked that not yours. Give to all those who are present there. And that the same custom in Hinduism also. He who cooks for himself, he eats sin. Krishna tells in the Gita. That is, you have to share with others. When I was going once on foot, I went to a house for meals. I was still ate. And I saw they put in a plate some breads and covered it. The idea is when the, our, some of the Aksara Orthodox Hindus, they always skip something. Who knows, unknown guest may come suddenly. Keep some food. And the even time, if nobody comes, they give it to the cows. Because the idea is keep something for a guest. Who knows when he will come. And that house I have seen, they do that. That is, the food that you cook is not yours, it belongs to all those that are present there. Therefore, I. There is no place for I here. We, 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 it is ours. Let us. At least you, you be conscious about it when you use I. Well, out of necessity, I so and so and you sign it. But remember always, I can't do anything without the help of others. I couldn't exist without the help of my father, mother, my, my relatives. Therefore, we are all interdependent, interconnected, inter 
inter what's called you know, related. We can't help it. That's why humanity is one. Or I remember our Maitri taught our children a song, we are one, we are one. I always love it. We are one. And in there, there is no caste difference, no religious difference. Muhammad actually said it to you know universal brotherhood he preached, not Islamic brotherhood. These people made it Islamic brotherhood later on. If we are one, that is one of the greatest statements actually. To see the, 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 the same self in all. Therefore, here I has no meaning. We use it out of necessity, out of habit. But believe it and remember, I may use the term, but I can't do anything without others. That is, that's our last, that's what you get, that's called life. Now what, you tell me something now. Do you, do you guys want to talk about that? See, the, the, what start, happened? Start Bombay. Start, start Bombay, Bombay, yeah. You know, she's, yes. the, the question is, you know, things happen in life. We don't know how they happen, how we fulfill it, we don't know. The, that we have, there's no reason when I try to find out, it happened, that's all. But somebody asked you a question. Mm -hmm. If we have to give up desire, then how, why God gave the desire? No, 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 that is, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. You say, you don't give up desires. Believe me, all of you. Sri Krishna made it very beautiful. That desire, which is unopposed to virtue, is of divine origin. We have got many desires. But you should not contradict virtue. That's the most important thing. Any desire, if it separates you from others, is sin. Any desire which unites you, that's virtue. Good. Any desire that you have to hide, don't do it. This I know long before I became religiously inclined. I read this in a letter written by Nehru to his daughter. He was in jail. Her birthday came. When he was out, he always used to give so many gifts to her. But in jail he had nothing. Therefore, he said that morning, my dear child, I got nothing to give you. But one great noble thought came to my mind. I want to give that as a gift to you. What is that? Don't do anything in your life which you have to hide. Now, we were studying Isha Upanishad, some Premeshanuji, a great soul. He was explaining to us that in Isha Upanishad, there is one passage, Tatona Vizugupshate. And there are so many commentaries and notes. He said, no. Gopane richa thakena. The desire to hide will not be there, he said. Beautiful, like that, that is stuck to me. All these things, you know. Anything that you have to hide, don't do it. Anything that separates you, don't do it. Desire is not bad. Good desires for the well being of all, they are good. Dharma avridho kamosmi, Krishna tells in the Gita. That desire which is unopposed to virtue of divine origin. Fulfill it, he said. Buddha said, destroy all desires. Krishna beautifully said, no. Good desires, fulfill it. I want to help some people, do something for them. That's good, it is. That's not by desires. No, no, you can't destroy. If you want to des destroy desires, stop breathing. <laughs> if you can. Why you breathe? You desire to live. Can you stop breathing? Try. Therefore, desires, there are types of desires. That's most important. We can't destroy desires. Desires will be there. Only thing is, what question, what is good? What is, what is the meaning of it? How 
I should fulfill it. Then it's all right. Life becomes meaningful when we put questions and follow the teachings of the great souls. You can't run away from this world, jump out of this body. No. You have to be here, you have to cater for your body and so so for others. Desire is not bad. Let us go to that su- subject. Well, I don't know exactly. <clears throat> it may be sometime in November 34. 34. He came to Bombay and they published in the papers that so and so, a direct disciple of Sri Ramakrishna and the president of the Ramakrishna order is going to come to Bombay and stay in car. And I did not know where car was at that time. But 12 miles away from Bombay fort, where I was living in fort, fort area, I asked a friend of mine who was a reporter in Times of India. He said, I know car. Let us go, I told him. He's a Muslim mind that. And we were good friends. We were staying in the same room. And we, he took me there. I rather I went too early. One Sunday in last week of October, I went and there, and they said, no, he is not at come. Again, 4th of November, I went there. No, he has not at come. Again, 11th of November, I went there. They said, he has come, but he is not keeping well because of the railway journey. Long journey, he is tired, he is taking rest, he will not meet anybody. I was so disappointed, and I he was coming down, slowly looking down on the ground. A heavy hand fell on my shoulder and looked up. Mm-hmm. Swami Vishwananda Maras, the head of that Bombay Center. Who was in Chicago later? Yeah. My young man, why are you so gloomy? He said. Well, Three, this is the third time I have come to see him, but he has come, we can't meet him. I have to go back, I don't know when I will come again. No, come tomorrow afternoon, you will meet him. And I so, and we walked together from there to railroad station. And wonderful man, he's very loving, put me all sorts of questions and I answered. And uh, we, then I, the following day I came, 12th of November. But I was afraid of a Swami in the office room because three times, oh, you have come again. The previous Sunday was, therefore, I was afraid of seeing him. And it was, it was a little annoyed. Every week you come and ask that question. Well, I, said, I moved away, you know. Therefore, I, in some staying, went to going into the house, outside there is library, veranda. I was going up and down watching the whole room. Suddenly at 4, 30, 5 o'clock, somebody brought a huge chair and took there. And after some carpet was put. And people were moving. Suddenly I saw a Swami with a nice flowing cloth, long hair, and slowly tap, 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 coming, is coming. He must be that Swami. And I watched him. He, he was coming and ready to sit there. And I, meanwhile, I went and threw my shoes off. And I went to the room without any consciousness what I'm doing. I sat just near his feet. He couldn't avoid me looking at me. And all was, I, I did not see the others were at all. And I sat there, he looked at me, went on putting questions, who I was, what is what I was doing, and all things. And then he said, you see, doctor has come to examine me. What is wrong with me? I don't know. A doctor has come to examine me. It's not working. Doctor has come to examine me to find out what is wrong with me. I don't know. Let him examine. Let us find out 
When I looked up, I found all people standing. I, I was so afraid and slowly walked away to the corner and I sat there. And then one Dr. Das is him. He examined him and they were all talking in Bengali. First it was talking with me in Bengali. So I don't know. Then he started small, nicely in English. Then I went away to the corner. And after a long time the doctor examined them. They were very happy. And then it is dark, I have to go back. And I told this some Vishwan Numaras. Again, come tomorrow, he said. Okay. That day I went away. I met some of our friends who visited that center. I acquainted myself some, with some of them and went back. Again, I came Tuesday, then that 13th. And Swami was alone in his room. Vishanji was so kind, I tell you, really, I bowed down to him many times. He said, oh, you come, you go straight, turn right, and that room is there, you go straight inside. Don't wait for till he comes here. I don't know why he's so kind to me. And I just did it. And he was, Maharas was lying down, seeing I bowed down to him, and I sat down, he slowly got up. Well, you know, come. And he went on putting questions, all sorts of questions, what I was doing more clearly. He wanted to know, what made you to come here? What are you doing? I said, well, I'm doing work, no doubt I'm studying also. See, I was in Gandhi's volunteer corps, doing some work there, helping under Gandhi's suggestions. But I read Vivekananda works there, he plainly says, you know, with a spiritual background you should work. That is for your own illumination, for the good of the world. But where to get that place where this spiritual background and this kind of work, where I can do some service? Well, I will send you to a place where you find a right man and right atmosphere there. I will send you to a place, he said. That day, not very much talk. Next day when he came, that place is Haridwar. There is a great Swami who does his wonderful work, social service, and there you will learn more about it. How old are you? Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Uh -huh. Yes? When you went to this No, no, one question never came. I wanted to do some work, social work, with a spiritual background, religious background. One question never, I, I, he never asked me, I never said it. That question never came. Then, when he, when he said that is place, you go there, there's a nice atmosphere, and you will, you will learn many things, you can do many things there, he said. Well, that day, that much, and I went away. Again, next day, I was asked to come by Swami Vishwanandji. Whenever you want to come, you come, he said. Therefore, again I went, and then he told me also the place is Haridwar, and you go there, it will be a nice place. You will, you will have a good atmosphere, he said. When you met him in Chicago, did he recognize you? Chicago? No, no, he recognized him more than that. Okay. Vishwananda actually, Vishwananda, everywhere, every time I went there, I saw him also, always. He remembered very well. When he came to this country in 1938, after 38, he used to write me letters to Boston, Bombay, Bombay to Hardwar. And when 38, when he came, he told me, I saw Swami Akhilananda also there in 1934. Nakhilananda and one, two, two, two American ladies. But they are some distance from a distance, that's all. And afterwards I came to know they left Bombay or London, something like that. Vishan they knew me very well. He used to write me letters from Bombay to Haridwar. And when he left also, he told me that I'm going to America to 
what way of one song is or is it generally yes, Shravan that died and he, he was asked to, he was taken by some Akilananda. But anyway, he knew me and let me tell you, he is responsible for my coming here. Later on, there's a big angry incident. Yes. Oh. Tell that part. So, what happened was this, <laughs> what happened was this, one day he came to, Akilananda wrote me a letter in 1954. Asked me to come, that he had already written to headquarters. And so Amiri Shuranaji, then assistant secretary, called me. I was in Kashmir with Ranganathananda, guest of the Kashmir governor, wanted to see Kashmir there. He called me to come to Belurmat before going to Isaac. No doubt I went there. But you know, all things that happened, I, have to, I came. After my coming, 54, uh, Thanksgiving or something like that, he came, Vishwanandji. And we stayed in the same building, Providence Center, two rooms separate, third floor. The next morning we were coming down, we met there. The Swami said, you go first, he said. Well, if I go first and you fall on me, I'll be pasted like, like anything. No hope of my survival. But if you go first and I fall on you, nothing happens to you, nothing happens to me. <laughs> then he shouted from there, Hey, I don't know why I asked you to bring this boy. He has not changed any bit. <laughs> then I said, Did you tell him? Judge, yes, so you go. And I, I came down. We had breakfast. We said, Brahmarpano. And I sat quiet. And I told Akhilani, Tell me the whole story now. What happened? He told me, he said, I wrote to many people, nobody is willing to come, and I was rather disappointed. Then he said, there's a boy there in Vaisyag now. You write to him, he will come. If he comes, he will not leave you. He will be loyal to you. Ask him to come. Then he wrote a letter. And no doubt I came. He was very happy with Shwanaj. I used to go to Chicago quite often. And uh, he's a wonderful soul, I tell you. He lived in this country as a hermit. Never cared for anything. Very, very happy in his own way. Well, that is another big story, no doubt. Yeah. But you know, it was he who told Swami Kilananda to write to me. I was not willing to come because I was doing something in Vaisyak, you know. But um, the other Samis who loved Sami, Akhilananda, they told me, you go there. The three or four trustees, they are very much for my going. No, I came here. Then the Swami asked me details about my life, this and that. Whenever I went there, first question, when are you going? <laughs> Then I told him one day, say, I have studied the map. You see, the train goes from here to Delhi. From Delhi to another train goes to via Merat to Haridwar. And uh, therefore, I am seeing train. Oh, who are you? Who asked you to go by train? But there is no other way. Are you going to be a monk? I don't know what you have to say, I want to stay there. You have to walk, he said. For more than five miles I never walked. And it's thousand miles, you know, he said, look here. I walked on the Himalayas bare feet. Snow, cold. I survived. Then immediately I fell down on his feet. If you bless me, I can do anything, I told him. He said, yes, you will make it. Go, he said. Now, three conditions again. You should not carry money. No, something, a luggage, anything, extra cloth, that's all. No sightseeing. One meal a day. Don't stay anywhere more than a day. One meal a day. All these rules he put. But I know, it's very difficult, no doubt. There are no shoes. No shoes. 
very difficult actually. But I know somehow that it happened. No money, bare feet, no doubt. One, 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 one meal a day, don't stay more than a day, and no sightseeing. No, two, one, two pieces of clothes, that's all. I did not know that it is so cold. Because it's winter coming, December already, on 3rd December I left. And it's, uh, the more I move towards the north, it's very, very cold. Therefore, in some place I have to, I have to, I have to run to cover the distance fast, you know. And uh, it's really, some of that I, I don't think uh, I could do it even now. <laughs> that heat, you know, that, that his, his blessings are there, therefore I could do it. You see, one thing, I first, for two or three days, two days, I think I did not eat anything. Then I went to, I saw a temple there, Ganesh temple in Maharashtra. I went to the temple and I told the priest, for two days I have not taken anything. I said, oh, yeah, I will, come on, I will give, in his house he gave me some food. And then I started. When I reached Nasik, there is the Ram Mandir, there is one. And then the, from that time onwards, I was trying to find out a temple. Go to a temple, then you got something. Therefore, I went to the Ram Mandir, and there is one Nepali Baba, a very old Sandhu with a big beard. He looked at me. You stay with me, he said. It's a nice room, by side of his room. You stay here. Then I stayed and he arranged for meals, food. He was not taking food. He was taking milk and nuts at three o'clock daily, nothing else. Then I told him, I cannot stay, I'm going away. Don't go with the white cloth, he said. But what can I do? With? I will give you gero cloth, you'd wear it. If you go with this cloth, people suspect you. But I, I'm not, I, I should not wear this cloth because when I wear this cloth, some people scold me. It's only the sadhu swear. You are a sadhu, you are a monk, he said. You are not going to be. Whether you are, you are not. You are. Tell your teacher that I gave it to you. And Nepali Baba gave it to me as Swami. They will take it. And he took a white cloth from me and he gave me a nice gero cloth, a gero shirt, and this is what's called a chadar and a small piece of towel also. Then with that I came. When I went to Haridwar, I wanted to take away this thing, wait, white cloth. Or Swami said, no, Kalyanaji, you look nice in this cloth. Your monk is... One thing I forgot to tell you. I, Swami Akhandananji wrote a letter to Swami Kalyanananji that I was coming there. A boy from Maharashtra is coming there. Uh, he wrote in Bengali, Take care of him. He said, I never got a letter from President like this. The moment he saw me, argued by chance that Narayan is Sambol. Then he was so happy. And he called us to brahmacharis and they made arrangements to stay by his side room. And he took care of me like anything, I tell you. Really, Jatragori, he never allowed me to do anything. My business was to be with him always. Come from the shrine, take breakfast and go to his room. And we both used to go around. He has got regular work, hospital and everything, going to garden, to kitchen. Cow shed, all these things he used to watch one round, and I used to go with him. For two years, that was my business. How long did it take you to make that walk? December 3rd, I left. 
फेब्रुवरी सेवन तालीज यू फेल्ट सीक ऑन द वे नो कहाँ यू हैड फीवर और समथिंग वांस वी सी व्हाट एप्पेंड द बेर फुट वॉकिंग माय ब्रूइस फीट आई कुंड वॉक एंड आई समोद आई लिम्प डिंट वॉक दे फॉर आई मूड अवे फ्रॉम द रोड एंड द ग्रास आई स्टू वॉक बाय साइड That also I couldn't do it, and uh, one uh, one evening, one uh, afternoon, I think, I went to a place away. Uh, there's a tree under the tree, this nice grass, and I lie down there. Actually, I thought this my that was my end, and I prayed to particularly Sri Ramakrishna that time, and said, now I couldn't make it. This is the end of it, and I was praying and I fell asleep. And after some time, somebody came and. Woke me up. Get up! I will take you to the next place. I said I can't go. I have, I have no money. I can't go. Oh, you did not give money. I will like. I don't take money. I will take take people like that. He said. I can't even walk. He lifted me up and put in the. There is a big uh, uh, bus in the back seat. He put me lie down. Lie down. He said. He and the another driver, conductor and driver, nobody else. That car went to, that bus went to a place called Dhulia. Later on, I came to know in Khandis district in Maharashtra. He took me to a place and asked me to get down. You go into this house, he said. And I went into that house. Is the steps up? Up when I went up, there was two people sitting and talking about some legal affairs. Then I said, "Oh, I'm sorry, it's wrong place." No, no. What do you want? Somebody brought me here. You go and say, "Take rest." Oh, you can come. You go just that way. Behind the screen, there's a bed. You lie down there. One man told me, and I too I went and I lie down there. These people went away, and after some time, another fellow came, put the light on, looked at who are you? He said, "I'm sorry, I know this wrong place." No, no. I want to know who you are. I want to go to Haridwar. This is thing. I cannot walk. I have torn my feet. You have come to the right place. He said, "I am the disciple of some Vishwan and Maras." There are two brothers, Sarath and Ram Krishna Joshi, Vishnu Joshi. The brothers, one is a teacher, another is a lawyer. He called his wife. Wife brought some hot water. He cleaned my shoes completely. Cleaned and put some talcum powder, bandaged it, and took me to third floor where there was a shrine and a room with a bed. He asked to lie down there. Then <laughs> that day, I didn't lie down. Whole night was <laughs> the shrine is there, Sir Abhishek's shrine, and I was crying and looking at him. It's a miracle, I thought. I told him for seven days I was there. It was all healed up. Then I told him I am going. No, we have decided to take it to Haridwar. No, I have to walk. I told him he asked me to walk. This is a, by chance I came here with the bus. Now I have to walk. I can walk. My feet quite all right. They poor people. No, please allow me to walk. They came till the end of the the town. They came and uh, can't you can't you take us to some distance? No. I, when I am all right, I should walk. Then I started walking, and then I reached no doubt different place, Hala, Agra, then Vrindavan, and I came to Delhi. When I came, when when I went to Vrindavan, when I was a little boy, I, was, I liked to see Vrindavan and Sri Krishna's temples, but believe me, I never saw anything. No sightseeing, nothing, no pilgrimage even. I determination. I said no. I should not go. I went away to Delhi, and fortunately, Delhi Gandhi Ashram. I knew some friends long back in Bombay. Therefore, I went there, and I, when I went there, I told somebody, "Tonight I want to stay here, and tomorrow I am going away." Where are you going? I'm in Haridwar. You know, tomorrow morning is the birth birthday of Swami Vivekananda, 27th of January 1935. Vivekananda's birthday. 
They said, we are all going. You also come. That's a good idea. And I went to Vivekananda, the, 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 the Ramakrishna ashram is there. They did not occupy that. They were not allowed to occupy it because they have not completed the project. Therefore, they were staying in rented house, but they absorbed the birthday of Swamiji there. I remember the birthday, I was there, I stayed there, and I met some Satraka Shananda. Yeah. Oh, I, I talked with him, and, and I had Prasad, and after Prasad, I didn't tell anybody, I walked away. Because, you know, if I tell that they will say, stay here, stay there, they will say. Therefore, I walked away. From there to Meerut. The road is there. I found out the road from Bombay to the Bombay Agra road, Agra to Delhi, Delhi to Meerut. From Meerut, I went to Haridra, Haridwar. I thought Haridwar is the place. I asked everybody, is there any Ramakrishna mission here? No. And finally, I went to Dharamsala. There is some South Indian gentleman. I asked him, did you know anything about Ramakrishna? Yes, there is Kankal. There is Ramakrishna hospital is there. It's one mile from here. I thanked him very much and I went there. It was evening. I didn't not task him, little light was there. I saw the five big gates, all were locked. So what is this? Such a big place inside. All big, five, all, one by one, I all went, all were locked. Then I saw one gate, the, the wicked gate. I pushed it, it went in, to that people go. And I went to the wicked gate. And I found inside buildings, this side is the other buildings. And I want to, there is one Swami standing there. I want to reach him, there is no way to go. I jumped over the fence. There's somewhere in the corner, maybe uh, some opening. And seeing, jumping, our dog was, Swami said, there's a big dog looking at me. Did not, did not move. And another fence, that also I jumped. With terrible fear, because the dog may come. And then dog did not move, waiting for Swami's orders. And I slowly walked to Swami and bowed down to him with his cloth. Are you by chance Narayan? Yes, Swami. I got a letter from Maharaj that you are coming. I am expecting you. All is this. Well, then he called to Brahmacharis and asked them to arrange my and give some to take bath and all the things. He did he really, he cared for me. He did not allow me to do anything. Every day I have to go to him first. I have to go with him every place, wherever he went. And everybody used to say, he is going to spoil this boy. He is not allowed to do anything. And what is going to with him? Day in and day out, I am eating and going there. <clears throat> and I could not speak the Bengali. The Hindi also did not know. Only one good, the, the, those brahmacharis are wonderful boys, Panchanand was there. They said, oh, they loved me very much. I said, well, I'm glad you have come. And we were there. Just a month passed. Then Swami Kalyan, they said, you know, there is a Swami in Rishikesh, Sargashrama. You go and request him to come and teach you. Some Premesh Anandji. Uh, oh, he was a Sargashrama. If you go and request him to come and teach you all, he is a wonderful Swami. You will be benefited by that. We too went to the Brahmachari and I went there. And I told Swami, I am come here from Bombay. Swami asked, Swamiji asked us to request you to come and teach us. Well, he didn't like to come. Please. Not only his request, we request you, please come. On one condition, he said. Daily you have to get by two verses, one from the Gita, one from the Upanishads. If you promise, then I will come. I promise, I told him. Others I don't know. That is enough, he said. He came. He came and he stayed with us. 
he was really a wonderful swami so early he had contacted so oh 35 itself um, after all these years you know past this is a long walk and you thought back why he asked you to walk why did you i don't i i never put question why i think it is a discipline to me i thought i never knew what see he wanted uh, uh, to test me or something i don't know i never put that question why he asked me to walk he himself walked no doubt therefore he, he wanted to, um, me also to do that all right yeah at 30 yeah we have to go now for supper We could continue, but no, no. Thank you all very much. This. Thank you, Baba. So good, very good. Om Masato Ma Sat Gamaya Tamso Ma Jyoti Gamaya Murchor Ma Murtam Gamaya Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Lord lead us from the unreal to the real, from darkness to light, from death to immortality. Peace, peace, peace be unto all.